Well, it is a little bit late today on Sub Wednesday. Um, yesterday, things just got really busy, and today, this morning, they did the same, and all of the things I was planning to prepare ahead of time for the stream today didn't happen. So, um, well, we'll just see how it goes. Let's just say my entire workbench, not studio, but workbench here is just crowded and messy. And paints I don't need that never got put away. I'm just going to complain about it because, um, yeah, I'm not sure how it's going to go. But uh, we'll, we'll start doing some stuff. Yes. <clears throat> what I wanted to do was uh, show you that I actually accomplished some things on uh, on this stream and on Monday. What do you mean there's no music? It's counting down. I don't understand. The, the uh, what is it, Razor or something came on and it's counting down, counting up actually saying that it's playing music. I'm gonna push this button and see if it makes a difference. So all indications on my end are that the music should be playing, and I'm not sure why you're not getting any. Um, sometimes that's a problem because then I, you know, there's silence if I'm not talking. <clears throat> um, well, <clears throat> what we have, what we have here is this was named. This was supposed to be a shark bursting through the water, but um, shy guy, hi. Isn't that, see, you got what you wanted. Landris Maximus of Sharkandia is bursting through the grassy plains. And no, I'm not, yeah, dump, 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 dump that. Okay, I did that, what, like six times or something on Monday? Probably got old. Anyway, it's done. Yeah, um, who's, you, you guys are going to have to give me things to, to go on about. Anyway. Uh, Landris Maximus here is complete and came out looking, you know, not too bad. Looks pretty sharky, right? So I get to put this in the done pile, which is on top of the shelf over here. So it's out of the way and I don't knock it over. And then I came pretty close to finishing uh, the Demon Frog, which uh, once... Uh, Landris Maximus burst through the grassy plain. They became very good friends. So I need to do something with these little spikes, I think. Maybe a little more highlighting. And then um, need, need to paint the base. Uh, I'm looking at this, and when I painted painted the, uh, the feet, I totally missed. It's way down inside there where you can't hardly see it. I managed to... Uh, this painting part of its right rear foot. I'm hoping that those are happy dogs that are playing and not uh, something that's going wrong. Uh, yeah, I'm tired today. Yesterday was a long day. And this morning, all sorts of things came up, and that's why I'm late. Anyway, I'm continuing to work on the control deck, but I'm also going to begin starting on the gyro deck. There's not too many parts to this, okay? But I needed I need to get this bulkhead done. I think, you, yeah. Debate it out in chat because that's good if you if you're talking about something useful in chat like what to name the demon frog um, Then People might people might be paying attention to that they might even weigh in and at some point somebody can cash in 10,000 viewer points and name the frog um, So at some point today, I'm going to be digging these parts out before break, I want to prime them during break because I'm getting close to being able to put this whole bottom part in uh, the part below the control deck. 
Um, and I want to get that in. Yeah, I mean, you can do that. Anyway, I want to get this stuff in uh, because I need to do some major modifications to the control deck deck before I can even paint that and install it. So um, I'm going to uncover what I've got here because I don't remember how far along I was last week, Wednesday. I do remember that I had to uh, stop doing what I was doing because I couldn't get a paint jar open. Now look at all that. All, all these parts. There's parts. Yeah, oh, yeah, I just knocked them all over. That's That was lovely. I did a good job there. As I picked up something I probably needn't have done. Um, these parts are all done parts. They're completed parts, which is cool. And this, oh, yeah, this is the, the finally... Yep, this is this is the finally completed um, forward bulkhead of the torpedo room. I got it painted green. The green paint settled down pretty nicely and evenly. Uh, the detail is still showing through all right. So at some point in today's stream, I hope I'll be able to actually install something into the submarine. And that would be this. Just put that up here where it's out of the way. These are the confounding tubes for the periscopes, which are not all the same length, and none of the three are the right length. And I was, yeah, there were these little bitty things on the control panel here that goes in the very forward part of the um, control room. And I was going to paint those dark green, and that's the paint that didn't open. <clears throat> this side um, faces a, a room with bunks and lockers in it, and that gets painted light blue. You guys, so I need to do that in a light blue color. And this <clears throat> faces the head or the restroom, and this gets painted light blue on this side because these two are the kind of sandwich that maybe the officer's bunk room or something. Now I'm looking at this and I don't know the line, the, the line here, which is going to show because it's right up in front of the locker and the wall just does not look very good. I'm going to have to put on my head magnifiers and see what kind of touching up that needs. But it's just, it's not a very good line. Um, so, yeah, where was I? These light blue, light blue. This one goes on the far side, the aft side of the um, control room on top. So this gets painted green because that's the color of the control room walls. And this gets painted light blue because that's the color of the bunks. It goes here like this. You know, these parts actually fit together, sort of. So that's light blue. And then this other deck, the control room deck, which hasn't been painted because it needs a lot of work, goes on top like that, forming a deck sandwich. See how they fit on there? That's why I want to uh, get get this inserted into the sub so I can insert the rest of these. What I can say for sure is that um, the galley and the mess deck and so on could really use some overhead lighting. It's it's pretty dark, but you can see you can see into it. Okay, and then underneath here, this section here that's green. That's the servo room, okay? And that's the, those are the parts I'm going to be pulling out later, so this is going to have to be painted uh, green. 
at least that's what it says on the box top. Which is my color guard guide, color guide. And then there's a little bit on the bottom, <clears throat> right down here, it gets painted the dark gray because that's part of the, uh, just the whole color. So there's a bunch of different colors that need to be put on here. I think I was, oh, and then this side, this side faces the missile launch area. And for some reason, that's painted light blue. Um, gray on the top and gray on the bottom. <clears throat> but different decks go in here to hold the missile launch tubes. And what I really should do is bring one of the boxes over. Like I said, I didn't get prepared for this very well today. So you can, you know, see what I'm talking about here. All the different colors. You can see where these kind of fit together and this goes on top. And that isn't how it looks. <clears throat> but the, uh, the, the missile launch area, if you look back here, says that the inside of it is painted this light blue color, the same as the areas in the mess hall and stuff. Um, but the floors are actually painted gray instead of this uh, kind of tan color. Anyway, this is the only color guide I really have. The painting instructions are really not very helpful at all. Um, you know, I need to put this somewhere where it doesn't fall and knock things over. I'm not sure where that would be. It is a helpful thing. These other things that I put here for safety, where they're not safe any longer. Safe. There we go. That's definitely going to be in the way, but um, yeah. No, yeah, I've, I guess I've wasted enough time now. Well, I should probably get some little, little painting done here. I would go back to where I was leaving off last Wednesday, which was um, painting these little bitty, painting these tiny little um, uh, control panel surface things there. You know, it would be probably faster. I could just like paint stripes or something on it. So I've got the camera way up because I had, you know, wanted you to see all of this stuff because there's a lot of stuff here. Um, but the the downside of that is that when I start painting little bitty detail, you won't be able to see it. So I might just try, I might try to move this around a little bit and see how that turns out. I don't know. So this is the paint I couldn't open um, last week, Wednesday. And after, oh, that's a good effect. After the stream, I cleaned the, the top really thoroughly. Everybody knows that racing stripes make things go faster. That's why they, that's why they put them on, uh, on race cars sometimes. That's why they're called racing stripes. It isn't so much that it makes the car go faster directly is that the racing stripes themselves go fast. And if they are adhered adequately, sufficiently to the car, uh, the very fast moving stripes pull the car along with them. I bet you didn't know that that's how racing stripes worked, but that's, that's, it. that is definitely not the truth. Um, yeah, I pulled this color out. Not so much, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to have another coat on there, but I don't want to keep piling up paint. But the, 
the edge here along the side of the locker. I don't know if you can see that. It's just not very well done. So I'm going to get the little bitty brush out at some point after I make an effort to get these tiny little circles painted green. <clears throat> this on so that I can see things that are small. So do racing stripes work only if they're put on the outside? Can you put the stripes on the inside too and make it go faster that way? of danger in attempting to do these tiny little things at any time during the stream, but especially at the very start. Am I on camera? Yeah. Huh. Pretty, that's good. Too bad there's no music for you guys, because... Concentrating here. Trying to get the paint up to the raised edge of whatever control thing this is. The edge. You know, one of the standards of, is something tiny or not? I don't know if people still say it anymore. It's like the head of a pin, right? A pinhead? You know, that's, that could be a derogatory thing. That wouldn't be nice. But the head of a real pin is pretty small. And people use it as, you know kind of an indicator of tininess, like how many angels can dance on the head of a pin kind of thing when you're talking about something small. But the um, some of the detail that's printed on this submarine model, or molded in, I guess is more accurate to say, makes the head of a pin look pretty, pretty huge. that I'm able to get get this at, at this level at all is, I guess, for, for me, is pretty amazing. You can see it, but there's even a clock. That's not going to focus for you, is it? There's even a clock with little hands on it, and I was able to... Um, It's able to get those uh, marked using my technique of, of felt tip pen ink on literally, 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 actually, the head of a pin.
if I get these little green dots, green, these dots, that's pretty much what they are. These little circle things painted green. I'll set this one aside. I need to paint the other side, that light blue color. Part of the reason the sub is taking so long is detail like this, which, as you can see for me, is a pretty slow process. And part of the reason is that there's just a lot of colors on it. Um, and to some extent, I could have just left this alone, you know, and not and just left it gray, the plastic, but it it does look a lot better when it's painted. Okay, so now those those little bits um, are done. You know, let that dry so I don't mess it up. And then I'm going to get this brush thoroughly cleaned and try to fix the line along the side of that locker and this piece here. This color. Yeah, I'm kind of sleepy today. It was a really long day yesterday. I'm looking at my color chart here. used now. Did I paint that the wrong color? No, it's this one. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. There's two two paints with the same name, but one is made by Tamiya and the other one is uh, Viejo. And they're really similar to each other, see? I mean, they're pretty close in color, but uh, there is a difference. Yeah, I don't understand why you're not hearing the music. Um, because everything on my end says that the music is playing. Well, I don't know. Maybe there's like a, a cable out or something. Something might have got pulled apart. I'm not sure. But maybe during break, if I remember, depending on whether I get distracted by something else again, who knows, uh, we can get tech support. Come in and take a look at what's going on.
it's just an uneven line. So this is this is making it better in terms of this sort of pinkish beige kind of color. Um, but the tiny spot there that needs to be painted that that bluish kind of color. Right now it looks like you know there was maybe a dent in the locker or something and someone came along and tried, tried to repaint it and was not skilled and it didn't work. Put that other color out too. This is this is how painting like four dots of paint, five dots of paint in three different colors can end up taking 20 minutes. At least for me, there, some model makers must be able to do this kind of thing and just like, oh, zip, that's done, zip, that's done. But that isn't how it works here. This is, uh, this is the color. Let me write this. I can actually read it. <laughs> you know what we should do since this is sub of Wednesday? And it's shortened to subwed. <clears throat> we need to get a substitute painter in here. And then we can have a real subwed. You know, maybe not, you know, working on a submarine, but a subwed where it's Wednesday and there's a sub a substitute. You think you think that would work okay? I don't know. So when you look at this, it is an impressive array of parts. You have to think of this, you know, it's like really busy looking as each one of these little things was a separate part. Each segment of these walls was a separate part. You know, it was just a lot of little pieces that were spread out for this particular deck. Um, the control room deck doesn't have quite as many pieces, quite a few though. It still has like these tiny little rice grain chairs and all, but um, it's got more, more detail on all of them. So they've been taking a long time to paint. And then when they're finally painted, um, as I discovered when I test fit everything before I even started painting, there's some some major problems with the fit. In that the deck onto which all of these things go doesn't fit. Well, it fits into its slot with some critical pieces. That is, the periscope tubes don't line up. They're off by, let's say, between a tenth of an eighth of an inch, which would mean like a ninth of an inch, which is probably more precise in terms of fractions of milliliter, millimeters. So I need to uh, fabricate Modifications.
Man, that really sucks. I finally got the paint right. There's like this little granule. You're quite a bubble. Let me use this pin and see if I can get it out. Because it's right on the edge that shows. Yeah, I mean, it's old paint, so it's, I really should get a new, new jar. Okay, well, that's going to be good enough. Use a color that, um, Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't get used again. The other sides of these are light blue. This is light blue. Most of this is light blue for some reason. Um, the inside of the missile launch area is painted that color. Um, but on this side, the top part is green and the bottom part is green. And I don't think I've got light green going anywhere else. So I should be able to uh, paint those. Now the deck, this deck thing. Great. Here. So everything underneath it is painted light blue. And then this deck goes, the other deck goes here. And so this is painted green. So the thing I'll be painting green will be the tops and underside of this bit here. And then another deck goes under here, and that gets painted the dark gray. <clears throat> so this, these, these boundaries are really pretty clear. I just need to not go, I need to go over this edge here but not up above it okay to make sure i go up high enough here fortunately these are fairly thick you know so there's there's a there's room to maneuver here i need to go just under the bottoms of these here and then keep the line straight i'm tempted to I'm tempted to put a little piece of tape on there just just across the top of these so that um, I can see where the line is it's not not taping really in the sense of um, keeping the paint from going in a certain place but just def letting me know where the line is so I think I might do that I'm going to be using this green. That's the same color as this green and that green on the top and bottom of these. It's this, this is the opposite side of that. Okay, they face each other in part of the control room. And that is painted green. Get this right. I'd hate to be. I'd hate to paint this all, and then have find out that I painted it the wrong color. Right? That would be. That would be not not particularly good. Yeah. So this goes here. This is the bunk room, and this side faces the the uh, gyro room. Yeah. Right. That is green. Okay. Um, let me get some tape. Your tape. And I'm going to actually get a scissors, if I can find one, and make it narrower. Let 
Cup tape it is pretty cool. Yeah, sorry for being kind of quiet today, and sorry for the music not playing. Maybe we can get someone down here a little later to try to um, figure out what's going on. Fortunately, this doesn't have to be terribly precise because I've got a good sixteenth of an inch to uh, to play with. But I do want to know. I don't. I do. I want to not go below that line. I think I'm going to need to paint just a little bit, just a little bit underneath the control panel and the hatch, just in case you can see from the top. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. Um, this is going to be, I'm going to be using a little brush uh, just to go around the little bits of things, the fire extinguishers and the panels and the hatch. You know, get the line here. Get the line painted there. And then I'll be using a larger brush uh, to fill in because this, this green paint is pretty good about leveling, but it works better if... There are fewer brush marks. I'm going to put it on here. So I'm going to be painting the top and the bottom. There really isn't a good place to hold it. Okay. Um, yeah. So pretend you're hearing music. Pretend it's nice music, something that you like. And nobody, nobody has named the demon frog yet. So that opportunity is still available anybody cares to jump in on that. Yeah, you know, using up a lot of time and getting very little done. This is typical. This is just in case you haven't been to a subweb before. This is very typical of a submarine Wednesday. Is that a lot of time goes by and relatively little gets done because little lots of little parts that don't fit that need to be painted. Well, they don't need to be, but are being painted in great detail. Okay. So, see how we do here. I need to stop talking in plurals. You know, that's not really helpful is to be talking in plurals all the time. Let's see how I do. Detail around the edges.
Yep, you got quiet again. We really have a good topic to talk about much today. You know, in the past, I've been been able to talk about how this model submarine was taking as long as the uh, the original submarine to build. And then I was reading that uh, on the box description that in fact the 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 real submarine was completed ahead of schedule well probably the best thing here is that um i might be able to claim that that's true here too because i haven't set a schedule it's just like Oh, let's work on the submarine on Wednesday and see how far we get. And sometimes like this, um, you know, it's a really lucky day. And you actually get to see paint being applied, you know, very slowly. And not on a very large surface, but um, I am painting. And I hope you're relaxing so that you can have relaxing while I'm painting with Dyson Dungeons. There, how's that? That's that's almost like an ad. So I, I can talk about Dyson Dungeons. I usually do this a little later in the stream. Um, I really have nothing else to talk about, so... Dyson Dungeons is a group of friends and relatives who get to, had got together over a year ago to play a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Believe it or not, Dyson Dungeons has nothing to do with submarines, unless for some reason we encounter one, which may, would make no sense. But that doesn't stop those things from happening. And just because something doesn't make any sense, it hasn't kept it from occurring in our D&D &D campaign, at least not so far. Um, but yeah, it's a Dungeons & Dragons campaign in a world created by our dungeon mistress, Alexis. And it was a really cool, still wonderful, creative characters that we get to encounter from time to time. Getting excited about this. Um, anyway, that streams with a live chat three Sundays a month at two o'clock Eastern it's daylight time now. Later on, it'll be Eastern Standard Time, unless we go to, I don't know. Well, that's a good digression. Did, uh, did the legislation making daylight savings time permanent happen? I know there was discussion about it. Uh, an effort to just have to not change times during the course of the year. And all sorts of controversy about it, you know. You can't you can't really ever have people agree on something. Sometimes even if it's like ninety nine to one in terms of uh, opinion, right? You always gotta hear the one. One is usually loud and you know, anyway, yeah, that kind of thing happens all the time. So I don't know if we're going to stop, if we're going to change by falling back. I don't know if we're going to fall back this fall or not.
but for now it's uh, Eastern Daylight Time and the stream occurs Sundays at 2 and it would be you know it's really good and if you haven't already you should check it out and if you can't if you can't get it you know if your schedule doesn't permit joining in on Sunday you can always catch the older episodes older in that already already done they've already happened right you can catch those episodes on YouTube or as a podcast and if you just start joining us um, doing that is a good way to catch up because sometimes you know like in any D, &D campaign There's inside jokes and that kind of thing that happen, recurring themes. And if you stumble onto them and you don't really understand, you can always go back and watch the previous 7,000 million episodes. There's not that many. There's quite a few, though. Watch the previous episodes uh, to find out what's going on. Or if you just really, you know, think it's fun, you know, you can just kind of pick them randomly even. Kind of just random. Mm -hmm. Watching old things. It's like, and it's a good thing to do in the summer too, anyway, because summer is rerun time. That's what it used to be growing up. No new TV shows until the fall season starts. So you're in rerun season and you get to see. All the episodes of what? Petticoat Junction and I Dream of Genie and even cartoon shows like the Flintstones and stuff. You get to watch them over and over and over. It seems like each one comes on like a half a dozen times, even though it's probably only twice during the summer. Yeah. Anyway, um, we can just do the summer rerun thing and catch the previously streamed episodes of my Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I guarantee it would be a good use of your time. I mean, even probably even a better use of your time than doing your job. So maybe, you know, maybe you could even just While you're at work, when you're at, while you're at work, you could uh, you know put on some headphones and look really intense, intently at your computer screen, or you know look like you're busy and catch some uh, catch some previously streamed episodes of Dice and Dungeons does D and D. You know, you could do that. I'm not saying that would be the right thing to do, but I'm saying that you would probably enjoy it more than you would if you actually just did your job. For me, I retired some time ago, and this is this is almost becoming a job. So. there yeah, green getting it anywhere else so I'm using the wrong absolutely the wrong brush in the wrong way to make that happen doing I am doing that just I have to clean the brush after I do this but at least it'll get it done without uh, creating a disaster at least hopefully it 
did that. I'll have to paint over it with the other color. But at least I didn't mess it up. Okay, so there's that green. Sometimes it looks like there's brush marks on there, but this always levels out really nicely once it dries. Uh, they oftentimes just turn out to be variation in uh, reflectivity and not variations in height. Okay, so I got painted green. Got a lot of light blue to paint, including the center of this, the other sides of those two, and most of the other side of this. Cleaned out. We're getting there's magnets in the bottoms of those holders. got two other colors to do light blue there's a lot of that and then there's small areas of dark gray that will need to be done sometime around 11:30 i'm going to be doing one of these little excursions into the boxel parts and finding the pieces to the gyro room this bulkhead here the other side of this the, this part here is actually part uh, of the gyro room that's one of the walls of it but there's a floor and the gyro thing itself and then there's a control panel um, built onto the floor. And I want to prime those during break so that I can paint them um, after break. And I want to paint them because if I, if I install these bits here, finally get these things installed, the stack and the one below it, part of next door to this, on this side of it, on the aft side, is the gyro room and that all needs to fit within the hull all together okay and if i can get those painted i can get i can install this deck and this deck and the gyro room and these two bulkheads this one and the one underneath there i can get that all into the submarine and then only have to worry about the control room which is this deck, which is the deck that is a ninth of an inch off in terms of lining up with the periscopes in the sail. Let's see. So I think, yeah, I think it's safe to flip these over and I'm going to use the clips, the alligator clips to hold them. underneath there and then this goes in that's this is the side that you look in on so it's the side that you see and this one is the opposite. This one's a little trickier because of the door. There's a lot of little, little dinky stuff. 
that has to be done on this one. It's going to make it a little bit, a little bit tricky because I need to paint the, the edges of the door without getting it too much on the other side. Just a lot of edges to be painted around. So I'm not going to be able to use the big brush very much at all um, to even the paint out. But I think I have another brush in this handful of brushes here. If I can get them out without knocking over everything else. This one might be pretty good. I'll keep this available. This one I won't be able to use, so I'll just get that out of the way. This one I think possibly, but it's a little bit large. I'll just put these here. Okay. I'm going to paint these the light blue, and then um, hopefully this will be dry enough that I can uh, work on this. If I can't, if I can't do it on this side, that might be like the last thing. Can on this side, I can get a lot of. Um, there's a ladder here, but I only need to paint around this hatch and around these fire extinguishers. And then the rest of this can all be done with a large brush. And since this and this will be painted darker, I don't want to put this on the sticky tack, okay, because it's a painted surface. Um, I'll be able to paint this the light blue too, and then I'll do this last. And this is a pain because it's got desks and you know, it's just got all sorts of junk on it. I can take this off. I paint around the file, the lockers, and the and the desk on this one. But the uh, this just goes like this. We can see how that that ends up looking pretty decent. I got a little too much green paint down here, but I'm painting over that anyway, so that's not a real issue. Okay. Um, but I can, I can work on this. The, um, if I have another alligator clip, probably, since this is painted dark gray later, I can, I can grab it there. Yeah, that's holding pretty well. Still a little wet, the green. Um, but yeah, I can get the light blue. I can get that going and probably um, I want to get most of this done before I go parts fishing. Yeah, that was great fun, wasn't it? Let me give it a shake like this, too. Sometimes that helps. These paints are always shaken, not stirred. But if you ever looked into it, okay, that is looked into martinis, the recommended way of making a martini is to stir it, not to shake it. So 007 misinformed, like, entire generations of people.
leading them to think they were being cool when they were just ordering a poorly made martini. Movies. I was reminded yesterday that movies aren't real. So don't judge them that way. I was complaining about um, about Oppenheimer. I haven't seen the movie, but I've seen the previews. Like it way over dramatized everything. You know, there was there was this tiny little bit of concern. Looked at some of the the theory behind it that I don't know, would all the oxygen in the atmosphere suddenly be ignited? I mean, that when you think about that, it, that couldn't happen. This oxygen is just, you know, what combines with the fuel to make the fire. So you need to have fuel. I don't know. Maybe they were thinking, maybe, maybe that's what it was. I mean, it might not have been that far-fetched. What would have had to have happened is that the explosion would have somehow had to dissociate the nitrogen molecules because in the atmosphere the nitrogen is all bound up in these these little dual things you know in twos it would have somehow had to dissociate the nitrogen molecules so that they became atomic nitrogen instead of molecules of nitrogen and then um then the oxygen would have had to explosively combine with the nitrogen atoms, and that, that might have been the combustion. Because otherwise, the at, I mean, the atmosphere wouldn't burn because even though there's oxygen in it, there isn't any, there isn't any fuel. Maybe that's what they were concerned about. Anyway, I guess the movie makes a big deal about that because, you know, it's a movie. Although even, in, even I think in reality, it was like that, no, that's not going to happen. It's going to make a pretty big explosion, but it's not going to destroy the Earth. At least not one of them. Not the little bitty BB bomb that they set off there in Los Alamos. That wasn't going to be destroying the Earth. It was all the big ones that they made later that had the possibility of it, but... The destruction wouldn't have been because of the igniting the atmosphere. Anyway, that's one thing, you know, that I was told, you know, don't don't start getting upset because the it's not a documentary. If they wanted to make a documentary, they would have made a documentary. They wanted to make a movie. And so they needed drama. So and the same thing happened, I don't know if you've seen the previews, maybe you've even seen the movie. You know, the, somebody has to set this thing off, right? So, what do they have? This gigantic red button. I mean, it's almost 
almost like a comic strip button. You know, giant red button that the evil, the evil people in, uh, like even James Bond movies, right? We're going to destroy the earth. What do we need? We need a giant red button. Show this hand hovering over the button, shaking even more than my hand is today. And I've got an excuse. I'm old and shaky. I'm going. You know, I talked, I was chatted with my brother last night, and the same sort of thing. It's like, no, they would not have had a giant comic evil villain red button decided it was probably a toggle switch because that's how stuff was made back in this in the 40s a toggle switch it was actually a whole series of them because, you know, it wasn't just one thing that fired it. They had a sequence of things that needed to be done to make sure it was armed and ready to go. It was probably just a toggle switch, and somebody just went, yeah, tell me when you want me to flip the switch. Okay. Yeah, flip it now. Okay. Flip. Boom. Probably really kind of how it went. And it probably wasn't any really... No handshaking. I mean, not like handshakes, but a shaking hand. I just flipped the switch. It's a little bit like the over dramatic dramatization. You know, that's how you say it. You know, if you ever watch a car race, especially like a NASCAR race, they got somebody who's yelling. Yelling into the microphone, drivers, start your engines. You know, it has to be really loud and dramatic and everything. But then they'll show pictures of the drivers in their cars. And they're just like, they just reach over and flip a toggle switch. It's just like, bloop, that's it. So you get all excited about starting their engines. And then they just, it's like I'm sitting in my car and starting my engine. What's all the excitement about, right? Okay, now I'm going to use a slightly larger brush um, to fill this in. And try to eliminate as much as I can brush marks. Anyway, yeah. So as I was going on and on and on about stupid comically large red buttons, and how I'm sure that that wasn't what happened. And I'm sure that there wasn't any shaking hand hovering over the button. I was reminded it's only a movie. It isn't a document. supposed to be dramatic so that you get caught up in the drama of the thing of the booming thing anyway i'm not sure i can watch oppenheimer knowing how silly they made some of it seem not that i'm saying it's a bad movie i'm just saying it doesn't strike me as going out of its way to be uh, scientifically accurate. But then it's only a movie and it's not meant to be. It's still there. Okay, well, that hopefully that paint will, like it has in the past, nicely level out as it dries. 
when the variations in reflectivity disappear. So we got one of those little ones down. I'll try not to bust this brush. And we'll, uh, I will, I'll stop talking in plurals again. Do this one. Yeah, it just isn't giving me the steadiness I want today. I don't know what's wrong with these. They're not. Yeah, that's a little better. I don't want to put. It's not comfortable, but just weren't giving me a focus where I wanted it. Now, I'm getting paint on this, so I don't think, you know, I'm not sure if the music's still, the music not still playing. Probably it's still not playing, even though the counter, everything's lit up and counting the way it's supposed to, if it's playing. Maybe the problem is that I didn't update uh, the way every the thing was screaming at me. You want an update now? It's like, no, I want to do the stream. I'm going to sit around and wait for an update to run. But maybe, maybe I just need to get that update installed. And then maybe, if it were installed, the whole thing would be happier. and actually play the music as intended. Several maybes. But if it's not working now, then that's one of the uh, more likely maybes. Hmm. 
Okay, let's move on to the other side of the lockers here. up too much that the paint on the door is very uneven. Okay. We'll get get that brush back a little later. I fill in this this area here. Between this and the minifigs, this, this this little brush gets a big workout. I've actually worn one out completely. Just wore the bristles right off of it. Excessive bouts of painting and cleaning. So I bought two of them, not knowing how long this one would last. To slow slow me down a bit. When I didn't have a brush to brush with. This in the water. Get this back out. Drop the soles and use this larger brush to fill in the rest of this. It becomes light blue. And that'll dry. That will dry fairly nicely. Just like this is this is drying fairly nicely. So this is when that dries, this one will be done. Okay, and I can put this get a piece of uh piece of this here. There, when that's dry, that will be done. And when this dries, this will be done. And we'll, those will then join the, this is done pile. So on this piece, most of this is painted light blue. So I'll actually be able to use quite large brush on this. 
I just need to paint around the hatchway and the fire extinguishers. The latter will be painted light blue so that it's light blue under the rungs. And then um, the ladder itself is colored in, colored over, using a very fine felt tip pen. Just sort of touching the bits of the ladder so that it uh, shows up as being laddery. Okay. It's kind of nice. There aren't very many parts of the submarine other than like the outside of the hull where it's just this that color. In this case, I need to also paint the floor panel goes between it. So this raised area here becomes part of the floor and needs to be painted this color. Eventually, even getting, you know, the surface area being painted. It's not very large, that's for sure. This is the largest expanse surface area that will be painted in quite some time. Getting a fairly large amount of uh, painting done today. this little brush so that I don't get a huge amount of paint in the between the rungs but that it is there I don't want the paint to build up between the rungs particularly um, because then they won't be a raised surface and if it's not a raised surface it makes it a whole lot harder to paint them in, not paint them in, but mark them in with the uh, well, tip 10 later. Just so builds up on the brush after a bit.
Now I can use, I think I can use this very large brush. Need to get the paint in between there terribly much. In fact, I don't want to because the floor needs to fit in there. And if there's too much paint, then I have to gouge all the paint out, right? Hang on. So anyway, I got to rant about Oppenheimer, so my day is complete. Ooh, that was not a good thing. After working really hard to not get much paint in the rungs of the ladder, I just put a huge amount of paint in the rungs of the ladder. I'm going to have to do something about that. Okay, let's see what I can do. I'm going to take this brush that has fairly good bristles on it. Hopefully, they're absorbed. Notice on this, and see if I can absorb the paint out of those rungs. Brush it out, stuck it out like that. Seems to be working. Okay, well, when that dries, it should be okay. I've got a big problem here. Too much paint built up. I'm gonna just I'm gonna do this. Let's wipe across. Not the best thing in the world to do, but it just it was really not good. Just way too much paint built up. Okay, and I think what I can do then is take the larger brush. And if I am fairly careful with it i should be able to um reapply the paint yeah it's not too bad it's much better okay i need to paint light blue here there's still more to do with this color I'm going to cap this up and give it a real a new shaking in a bit. But I need to clean these brushes fairly thoroughly because they're they're just gumming up with paint, especially that big one. 
I'm going to use the alcohol bath. Which gives me a little better solvent, let's see. Doing on time. Hmm. May do that after break. Um, I need to find the parts so that I can prime them during break. If I don't have the parts, I can't prime them. And if they're not primed, I can't paint them. And if I can't paint them, I can't install them. So there's this whole cascade of things that need to happen in an order, right? The primer dries really fast, so if I paint them, if I prime them right at the beginning of the break, they should be ready to go by the time break is done. So what I wouldn't, what I probably will not have done before the break is painting the light blue on this side right here. Okay, might be just as well because the green paint hasn't quite dried yet and I don't want them to dissolve into each other. And then this will dry and it'll end up looking okay. And most of that will be hidden anyway. By, um, oh my. Always look around. I'm going to fix that right away. There's just a spot there that needed to be painted that does not have paint on it. And this will show. It's uh, right there. That will show because it's at the top of the floor. Sort of similar spot down here. Okay, I'm going to stop seeing this now. It's almost to that point of one more thing and it's a mess. Yeah, it's probably a good time to stop because that paint needs to be uh, reshaken anyway. And that can be done right after the break. These guys are trying pretty nicely. And then we will, I will, stop plural nonsense um have a big pile of finished parts here pretty soon but clumsy you can always really tell it's sort of time for a break when i start knocking things over and whatever Lips. It's over here, and you can admire all the finished parts. There are so many finished parts that are finished and done, and parts and things. Um, put this out of the way so I don't knock this over. today you can tell that things are happening in an unprepared fashion today um, what I am going to do is what I'm looking for are these three parts this floor which has a built-in control panel and the top and bottom of the gyro okay and uh, I keep forgetting about this somewhere up here is this ladder 
that after everything is installed is somehow supposed to be stuck in here. So I'll try to find that too. Um, here's the box and Let me try to reach through this and see what I can come up with. I think the ladder is one of the gyro parts. I think this is one. Yeah, oh, there it is. You can't see what I'm looking at. Let me move the camera. I am now rooting through parts. Here is one. That is the top of the gyro, I believe. There's the floor. You can tell because it has that control panel thing on it. Let me take this out. It might be where the ladder is. I'm not sure. And then I need to find the bottom of the gyro. I don't want to dump all these parts out particularly. This is the bag of little detached parts. Okay. I don't see... There's some the, the missile. There's missile. So I don't see the um, other part of the gyro. So I'm gonna go start going through this stuff and see if I can find it. Basically, it looks just like that. Okay. Oh. Got the dog's attention. Sounds pretty scary. I hope they're taking care of it. Okay, there it is. It's part number 53. 53 is the top. Okay, 53 is the top of the gyro. And the one I had pulled out earlier is the bottom of the gyro. And the, this goes in there. It's supposed to go in there, but of course it doesn't. Like almost everything else, um, it doesn't fit. So there's that. And then somewhere there's supposed to be a ladder. There's the ladder. You pull that out too. And we'll find, make sure we got the right part number. And then we'll take that out. So I'm going to use an X-Acto knife. And I will carefully cut off gyro, the top of the gyro from the sprue. leaving some plastic on it so that I don't create a divot there. And then I'll sand that off later. I'm trying to do some sanding. And I didn't have to fish through the little parts. Carefully be reinstalled in the box. And now I am looking for part number 78A. 78A is this large ladder. So attempt to carefully cut this off. This is where it snaps off and goes flying. 
It is. It's just, it is what. See? Fortunately, it bumped up against that and didn't disappear. Okay, now I can put the cover back on and get the box. Oh, man. Okay. Thank goodness there wasn't any wet paint there. All right. Um, so I need to do some filing and sanding, as I always do on these parts, because they don't, they have, like, flashings on them, little bits of this and that. Um, plastic parts that I don't want to be there, and, and if I can get that done before I prime them, I'm all the better for it. I don't know if I'm going to try to prime the ladder. Sometimes when it's really tiny like this, I can look this back here. You don't have to look up. You can see the parts there. Um, sometimes when it's a really little piece like this, trying to prime it with a spray primer results in it flying. Very carefully cut this off, leaving a huge chunk of sprue on it. It is quite soft, though, and this file digs into it pretty well. So I just need to be careful not to go too far. So, yeah, um, I'll be using the last bits before noon, more or less, for the break. Um, uh, getting these parts ready to be primed. Although, as I said, this ladder, this ladder may end up not being primed. Of course, these are pretty tiny parts too. So I'll I'll take it up and give it a give it a spritz. I think I'm going to end up using a metallic paint on this, like I did for the stairwells, rather than just black. All the other ladders that are just sort of raised edges, like the one I showed you on that one bulkhead. I've been doing in black because I've been using the felt tip pen, and that's black. But a standalone ladder like this, I think I can paint the same color I used on the stairwells, which is a dark metallic. And that usually will, I usually don't have to prime it to do that. I'm getting pretty close to getting this cleaned up. I keep trying to forget about this ladder because it looks like the installation of it into the model is next to impossible going to take tweezers and maybe contact cement or something and to make it hold in the right place. There it is. And now you, you can see that the, the sprue is gone. You can't even really tell where it was. Uh, this is not perfectly done. The, there's plastic between the rungs there, but it is what it is. This one also has a little bit of a sprue. This one was broken off, not cut off. We'll see in a minute, in a couple of minutes, how well those two halves fit together and whether after they're cemented, they need to be, whether filler needs to be put in or not.
these two things go together like this. There we go. Yeah, and you can see, you can see there's a seam, right? The seam, the seam shows pretty badly. They kind of rock back and forth. And I think, yeah, there's some, there's just some excess plastic here. One of the modeling books that I read, when I was trying to learn how to actually do models correctly, said with these little prongs, the best thing to do is just file them off. Don't even try to use them because more often than not, they go get in the way rather than help. You know, they're supposed to help you line up the pieces, but that doesn't always happen. So if these two things get cemented together, um, lovely. Yeah, so not only is there a gap, okay, but the, the parts don't line up. They, they just, this just isn't, this isn't working that well. There we go. There we go. Okay, so that's how they're supposed to go together. And that little gap there probably is going to be okay. Once it's painted, you won't be able to see it very much. Right? What I do know, and I, I need to clean this up too, though. That's right on the front, right? This was broken off rather than cut off. This is what I'm talking about. There's this little indentation. There's a divot there where the sprue broke off into the piece. And of course, when this goes into the submarine, this is going to be right on the front. And so I will need to fill that in and sand it down. And I should do that before I prime it. But there isn't time. It takes a long time for that to... Uh, it takes a long time for that to, to dry. So I might not be able to do much with this until next Wednesday. But what I can do is I can paint the control panel, okay? Because there's little gigaws and stuff on it. I might not. I won't be able to paint the floor until I get this fixed. If it were on the back, then it wouldn't matter. You wouldn't be able to see it. But it is, like I said, right in the very middle of the very front. And you look at it from this edge, and you can see the you can see the flaw. Well, hi. Um, let me put my glasses on so I can see chat. The schematic, these are the instruction sheets. Hi, Kamiko. These are the instruction sheets for the submarine I'm working on. I uh, went all the way back to the very beginning of uh, the um, torpedo room, which you'll see after break. I want to bring the hall back up because I'll be installing a part right in the front of the torpedo room. So I completed this. I completed the sail, the um, conning tower. All of this so far is done. Okay. And I can actually show it to you. It's not installed into the submarine yet. But if you look at this, this pile of parts, this whole pile of parts, Um, that's how this turns that turns into the galley of the and uh, the bunk room of the submarine. Yeah, it is peaceful to make. It's been taking quite a while to do. I mean, it's not a very peaceful. The thing itself is not very peaceful, in that it is um, a ballistic. The very this is a model of the very first ballistic launching uh, atomic submarine. 
This is the George Washington, the, the prototype of the Polaris launching. Uh, what I'm working on now is the control room. And if I move this, all of these pieces, okay, and you can kind of see it. They have little little dials and, oh, there we are, little dials and clocks and display kinds of things. I had a lot of fun doing the tiny little detail on these. And um, lockers with bookshelves and stuff. And these all go together here on this deck that I'm going to be working on soon. And the, uh, the problem with this is not so much all the little pieces, but that this deck doesn't fit into the hull correctly. It's actually like a eighth of an inch off to the aft. I have to, I have to add an eighth of an inch on this side and take it an eighth of an inch off on the other side to make it work. But I'm doing, I'm, all of these things fit together into the um, midsection of the submarine and the just having trouble getting the parts to fit uh, for the most part and so like this this prong on the bottom of this is supposed to fit into this hole and it doesn't okay so there's a huge amount of detail on this as you can see and a huge amount of detail on the model but the parts oftentimes don't fit so it's a little bit of a challenge putting it together. So there's been, this is, this is um, a model that I actually built. It's not the exact same model, obviously, but I built one just like this when it first came out in the 1960s, when I was like in, so probably like seventh or eighth grade, okay? And I didn't do a very good job of it. I just, I didn't paint it very much at all. But I just glued it all together. It was kind of a cool, it's a cool model. So on Wednesdays, on Mondays and Fridays, I do dungeon tiles and minifigs for our D&D &D campaign. Um, do minifigs and, and uh, dungeon tiles that we use in our campaign. But on Wednesdays, I've been given special permission to have what's called Submarine Wednesday or SUBWED using a military type acronym. Uh, I do, I'm working on this. And so I actually, in order to get enough parts, because these models were made in the 1960s, okay, in order to get enough parts, I actually had to buy three models, three separate models, because they were oftentimes started so little parts were already glued together and some were painted or painted really badly. And so far I have, I'm glad I did that because there are certain parts that like this, this control panel here where only one of the three was usable. Uh, the manufacturing quality on this was terrible. As you can see, and by the fact that uh, parts don't fit together. There we go. Just I just needed to file it down enough, and I need to file it a little bit more. Um, no, no, the parts I found were not painted. Uh, what I I can show you, I have one of the models, one of the kits. Some of the parts were painted, but I didn't want to use painted parts because they were very badly painted. And the, uh, well, actually, that's not exactly true. Some of the torpedoes were painted and I took the paint off. But I bought three separate models so that I could get parts that were not painted. So they, they, come, out, they come out of the box looking like this you know, shiny plastic like this. And so, no, I did all, the, all of this painting and all of the painting of all of these parts were done on the stream on Submarine Wednesdays. And I'm getting close to finishing 
the parts for the control room. And the, the issue I'm going to be running into, though, is that this deck, this piece here, doesn't fit into the model very well. It doesn't fit into the hull. And so after break, I'll be showing you the hull because I'm going to be installing one of the pieces that I painted last Wednesday. But I need to get this to fit. And then I'm going to be taking a break about like 25 minutes or so, about 25 minutes long. Be taking a short break because I need to prime these pieces. I'm going to prime these pieces so that I can paint them so that I can install them into the hull. All of this stuff all goes in together and it all has to fit just right. And if I glued or cemented one part of it in, I found that the rest of it doesn't fit. <laughs> so it all needs to go in. All the pieces kind of need to be fit together at the same time. I, I tested it once. It's well, twice actually, and it works, but it's it's a real kind of a touchy thing to do. That's when I discovered that this part doesn't fit at all and needs to be modified. So this now is filed down enough so that it fits. So this goes like that, and this bit goes on top of it like this, and then that becomes part of the gyro room. And I'll be priming these pieces and I'll be painting the control panel, but then I need to put some filler in and sand down the edge of this because uh, when it was taken off of the little trees that they're on, it was broken off instead of cut off. And so it kind of got indented. So I'm going to grab a little container. This is my holding things container so I don't lose them while I'm carrying them around. Get those a priming coat, but I can show off all the pieces here, all these pieces that, that go together into the submarine model. So now let me show you what it looks like when, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, you might have come on after I found those pieces, but this, this is a, the box top. It's really a long model, okay? And the part I'm working on here is right here. Okay, this is done and that's done and all of the little pieces fit in here. And then after that, it goes to the tubes where the missiles are contained and then the engine rooms in the back. So when you get one of these models, it uh, you just get this maze of parts. This I'm building this particular version of it because this one had the this one was almost entirely not glued or painted. Um, so I've been able to use most of the parts. The problem I've run into is like here, uh, if you can see this, it's warped. So I couldn't use this part. I had to get a piece out of one of the other models in order to uh, in order to build what I'm building because this was unusable. And you just that just happens. That's that's why I got three of these so that I can and make it work. But yeah, it comes unpainted in this kind of glossy gray plastic. Oh, I'm going to um, be taking a break, about 20, 25 minutes, just to spray these parts to get them primed and then come back down and finish painting. I need to finish painting this part. You can see this one is almost done. I have painted the top and the bottom. I need to paint this center section, that same blue as this, uh, and as the same color as this. And on this side, once the paint is dried, I need to get the felt tip pen out and paint, touch up the ladder so you can see that it's there. 
once this is painted and the paint's dry, then it's really close to being able to be assembled. And what I'll need to be doing though before I can assemble it is fix this, fix this part so that it works. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that on stream or not. It's just, I might not be able to do that. I might have to do that off stream, get the parts to fit, and then finish painting this, this part, which, you know, has some detail on it. And once that's done and it all works, all of these parts go into the center of the submarine. Anyway, that's the story of Sub Wednesday. Uh, thanks, and please uh, hang in. I'll be back in about a half an hour, and I'll be continuing to work on finishing up these little parts in uh, starting to paint these little parts, including maybe cementing these two together. Now, I might do that right away, is to cement these two parts together so that I can paint the whole thing um, as one bit. And then I will install the forward bulkhead of the torpedo room, and you'll get to see the submarine at that point. And I might even try to do some test fitting of these other parts just so and some measurements so I can see what I'm getting into. But I do need to take a break, uh, not only just to prime these, but I need to take a break. And I'll be back a little bit after 1230, probably between 1230 and 1240, depending on how long it takes for these to dry. See you soon. Well, back. Um, these are now primed, and the priming is dry. We primed the ladder. That was interesting. It didn't go flying too far anyway. Um, so I'm back doing little pieces of stuff. I'm going to cover all this stuff up again. I don't want it to get all dusty. You know, what I... Uh, what I need is for this particular piece of towel, paper towel to be smaller so that it fits here and I can put these parts there and not have them be in the way. And I can cover all this up so that they're not in the way. Now I've got a whole bunch of little junk that needs to be done, some of which I can get Anyway, the sequence of things. I want to cement these pieces together. All right. So that I can paint them. To be able to uh, paint it as one unit. Okay. Just as one thing. So I'm going to make an effort to get some cement and do that. Get that up nicely. Get some cement in the seams there. Basically stick them together like this. Okay. And do that fairly soon because I want that to set so that I can paint it yet during this stream. Um, this needs two bits done. I can't paint the whole floor yet because I need to fix this divot. It's not very big, but it's noticeable. But what I can do is I can paint the control panel and paint the floor later and get some of the plastic um, filler out and fill in that tiny... You can hardly see it, but it's right in a place where it's not good. And I can paint this ladder metallic. I need to paint this light blue, this band here, which is between decks, okay? And I want to install this into the submarine hull. I'm going to try to get all of that done in, uh, in a sequence that makes sense. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cement this together first 
so that I can, I think I get it, I'm going to get a uh, close pin so that I can hold it together. Okay. And then after it's done, they don't quite line up right. You know, it's not surprising. Hardly any of the pieces of this submarine ever did line up right. I'll probably like sand or file down the edges a little bit before I paint them. Okay, and then I'm going to paint this and the ladder and that. And we'll just, uh, yeah, I want to paint this. Paint this gray early on. I might just do that first so that I can do the detail on the control panel. And the color I use on that is neutral gray. Yeah, I'm going to do that. The cement sets up fairly quickly. But if I paint this first, then the paint will dry in time so I can get the detail done. Some of the detail done on this yet uh, this stream. And depending on how this goes, I might be done with the submarine parts, at least as far as I can go today. I might be done with that before 2 o'clock. And if so, I'm going to get the demon frog back out and uh, finish that. I can paint this if it gets a. I can paint this with a fairly large brush because it's. Uh, if I get paint down onto the floor, that's really not going to be too much of an issue because the floor will be painted later. And in fact, I want to make sure that the gray paint goes around and slightly onto the floor depending, you know, so it's gray when I eventually end up painting it, painting the floor, that is. I'm sure that this side in particular is well painted because this is the side that shows when it, um, is installed <clears throat> and i'm going to paint the whole top gray and then come back later you can see there's little buttons and stuff on it um, i'm not sure they might be indicator lights i'm going to paint some of those like the dark green that i used for some of the other so i just i'm going to you know i'm not sure what they were really like on the submarine, not that any of this is terribly realistic, really, but um, just, you know, it's molded on, so I'll do something with it. So I'll set that aside, and then that can dry. And then I'm going to, I'm going to get a clothespin. Let me get the paint out of this brush. You not to be gray because I'm going to be using it for the light blue lighter. <clears throat> Things go right there. I'm going to test this. I want this to be held pretty tightly while the cement is setting. I think. Yeah, that will work.
Okay. So we'll use, we're going to be using this liquid cement. You do a little bit unorthodox. I want to. I need to mark these because this is how it fits better. If I rotate it 180 degrees, it doesn't fit that well. So I'm going to mark the prong and the hole with this felt tip pen, so I can get it lined up right after I put the cement on. This is supposed to have an itty bitty tiny little brush, which it really doesn't. But um, it's liquid cement. It goes on like this. Always says the instructions always say use sparingly. We definitely want to be spare about it. And what this actually does, if, if, you, if you've been doing mainly D&D &D stuff, is it actually melts the plastic, dissolves it, so that um, it gets welded together. And if it leaks around the outside like it just did, it leaves, it just makes a mess. So yeah, yay messiness. I'm just going to, yeah, this has to be sanded down all around the edges because um, they don't line up. <clears throat> I knew that was going to be the case, but there we are. Okay, so that's done and that's studying. This is drying. That's good. It's had a flaw in the paint. Sometimes I can't tell if something just missed. Yeah, there's like a spot that didn't get painted there. Just happens more often than you know. I think I'm being careful about getting it painted, and then, then I wait a second, come back, and see that you know, there's a spot that wasn't, and it's not just a reflection because it's not dry yet. It just wasn't painted. Okay, so there's that. And I'm inspecting this ladder for flaws, and there is one. Waiting for this to dry and this to dry. Put those aside there. Paint this ladder. And I'm painting it. Let's see, make sure I'm using the right color. dark aluminium, which is this color. And what I want to do is I want to put, I have to, I can't, there's nothing I can use to hold it. I could use the sticky tack, I guess, but, you know, it's going to go up on the sides. So I'm going to look under here. I think I've got some like wax paper. Something that doesn't stick. <laughs> Not finding what I'm wanting. I wander around the workroom here looking for what I'm looking for and not finding it. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, well, in the absence of what I'm looking for, do something else. A lot of these. Okay, so I'm just going to set this on top of this. I'm going to hold it in place with a little nail while I paint it. And the paint's going to get on the surface underneath, but uh, that's okay as long as it doesn't stick. I'm doing a bunch of little junk, just, you know, cementing stuff painting some things so that need to be painted later. I'm going to be putting some plastic putty on that to fix that little gap, doing this painting here, get back to the bulkhead and finish painting that. So kind of like going back and forth on a whole bunch of little stuff, right? Just to, um, because they all need to be done, but none of it is very, like, consistent in the sense that I'm not just doing one thing. Okay. I need next to, and then I'm crowding my work surface with all sorts of stuff that's getting in the way. Always keep your work surface clean and neat like I'm not. Ever. I'm going to use this brush here. So I'm still getting this, and then I'll be putting this out of the way. Really give this a good mixing. Then I'm going to put this out of the way and hopefully not lose it. And I'm going to then paint the light blue on the bulkhead that's sitting over there out of the way. Okay. And then I'm going to come back and file down the edges of the gyro. And paint that. And then I'm going to paint the detail on this control panel. And then, at some point in between, depending on how, how well things are drying or setting up or whatever, I'm going to install the forward bulkhead in the torpedo room. A little bit of activity going on upstairs. I never know how much sound, if anything, comes comes through down here. I think there's a filter on the microphone, so most of the stuff doesn't happen. Just like you can't hear the music for a reason that we haven't fixed yet. You know, the counter says the music is playing. There's enough paint in the well there to paint about 50 of these. Okay, so I'll just set this on the side here. I didn't see that before. There's a, I don't know if I can fix that now or not. There's just a significant blob. In the ladder. Yeah, I mean, I, I really need to file that off. And then I'll come back and repaint it. And I didn't see it until the metallic paint was done. And then, I, then the reflection in the metallic paint made it very clear that there was um, like a mold flaw there. So we'll, we'll just set that down, pretend nothing, pretend nothing bad happened, nothing bad happened. It was just, that was just the way it was, uh, and we'll just repaint that.
this time without the flaw from the mold. Just making sure that uh, there's that that paint isn't getting in between the rungs there too much. Okay, well, that's good enough for for what we're doing. This palette out of the way. I'm not going to be using that. This is going to move two, and now I'm going to work on this. I just need to paint this blue, light blue. And I'll be using a little brush, a little bitty brush, to paint around it. Okay. Um, just to show you how this works, this deck here will actually go right there like that. Okay, right across the top of the um, lockers and back there. So I need to be painting, I need to paint this corner here because I get green paint down there and up around here. Oh, yeah, and then there's some dark gray. After this dries, um, dark gray here and here and here. And I might be able to get that done yet. I almost forgot about that. I'm going to get the dark gray paint out and put it in the way here. Make sure it's in the way so that I remember it. But this is the color I need now, the light blue. Okay, I'm going to need to get my head magnifier back, which I very carefully put not where it belongs. Watch the Clark Kemp thing. Yeah, get out the bitty brush and see if I can't get some decent lines around the desk and the lockers here. Okay, that'll do. I don't need to do the top because the um, floor fits on that. Need to get in between here. To get a decent line. On the edge of the desk. Let's 
sometimes you just go, you know, the model designer really didn't need to do this. This was not an essential component of the submarine, but it's there. So it needs to get its due. This is just like a little bubble or something here, which you will never be able to see once this is all put together. But I have no idea what that is or why. It's actually a chunk of like plastic that is where it shouldn't be. But it's nicely hidden behind the, the locker. You'll be looking at it from this direction, so it's not that critical. Just in case floor doesn't fit right, putting a thin line here. I need to paint up inside the legs of the desk somehow. Again, that's one of those things that no one will ever see. That I know is there. Yeah, might need a little touch up along the side of the locker there. I'll have to decide whether I want to or not. And I'm going to do the same across the top here. Again, it shouldn't show. Should never be able to see this, but. If you're not sure, get nailed the aesthetics down, right? Okay. Now I can use a larger brush. <clears throat> To paint the rest of it, and I will use this, which is a little risky. The brush marks down if I can pull it off.
I've had the same problem before. Just the paint starts to set up. It's too thick. Just, you know. Can't I learn my lesson? Okay, that's better. And I got some right there and there. I need to touch that up with the light green. Let's <clears throat> here. I'm going to see how this fits, if it looks okay. Okay. Just tiniest touch. Tiniest little touch of light blue paint right here. Okay, so we're gonna hopefully let that dry and it'll nicely even out like it has before. I'm gonna look good. <clears throat> me um, fix that light green spot when I'm thinking of it. can't really see it, but it's right there. And now it's gone. Yay. Okay. So this is this is pretty successful. This part, this this piece I'll say is now in joining the done pile. <laughs> Clean. And then I'm going to, um, and it's still not quite dry yet. We need to wait for this gray, gray paint on here to dry before I start messing around with the little detail stuff. But what I am going to, while I'm waiting for it to dry, is I'm going to put my head magnifiers back on um, <clears throat> so that I can see what the detail is. I can see that there are like control surfaces, like control buttons and things like that modeled onto the top of that uh, piece of the machinery there. But until I magnify my head, I really can't clearly see what they're meant to be, whether they're like indicator lights or rivets or... The intent was. We've got some paint built up at the base of the bristles here. Start uh, painting little detail things. Okay, so cover this before I spill it. This on, and I'm going to look at that in detail and try to figure out what the designer's intent was. What were they trying to do with this piece here? Some of these, I think, they're just going to be toggles. And the gray paint, seriously, this is like the second time I look under it. I look at it under magnification now, and it's really clear that there are significant flaws in the paint. So I'm going to have to wait a little while for this to dry. Most of this 
is going on places that are not going to be painted again later. <clears throat> so what I'm going to declare to be the case, even though you can't really see it, the detail is just so small. <clears throat> and so a lot of these are rivets along the side <clears throat> that there are indicator lights here, here, and here. These are going to be switches. So I'm going to just do those black <clears throat> with the uh, felt tip pen. Do these <clears throat> that dark green, like I've done on a couple of other spots. <clears throat> so I'm going to make indicator lights up here. Those are just rivets. <clears throat> these are going to be toggle switches. <clears throat> yeah. Most of it is going to be done with the uh, black felt tip pen. <coughs> I'll wait for that to dry again, and then um, get the pen out and start marking things. Okay, let's go back to this little beastie thing here. This is the gyro, and when I cemented it together, it became pretty clear that the parts, the parts just don't fit very well. So I'm going to take this file, just going to go around the the outside edge, and make and just file them down so that they uh, they match up. And this has been the case with a fair number of parts with this model, is that sometimes it was a single molded piece, like a lot of the chairs, for example, and they, uh, you know, the mold comes together in the middle, and either the mold didn't make contact, and so there was a lot of flashing that showed, or in some cases, uh, the it didn't even line up, and so like one side, the two the two halves didn't match, and there was this nasty looking seam in the middle. In this case, the two parts are glued together, cemented together, and they don't match. So that's, it becomes pretty obvious that they don't, and so I'm just filing them down before I paint it. I know it's taking the primer off, but that shouldn't matter too much with the metallics that I'll be using. And I've been using dark aluminum for some of these things, um, but I'm just, I want this to be a little bit brighter. It's supposed to be very shiny, the gyro case. So I'm going to use uh, not the brightest. I'm not going to do it like in chrome or something like that. I use like dura aluminum, which is a, has some slight, a little bit of dark pigment in it, but not a lot. It's not as dark as the one I use for the ladder, which is here. Not, not as dark as that. So the, um, this is the top of it. Sort of tricky part with this is going to be how to hold it. Because there's just this little prong on the bottom that goes into this hole on the floor. really a nuisance how much some of these parts don't fit together i'm expecting when i do the missile silo, the missile tubes there's two halves that i'll be spending a lot of time after they're cemented together 
sanding them down because the two halves aren't going to match up exactly. And I want a smooth surface. So I'll be uh, filing and sanding and then using some really fine sandpaper to polish them. Okay, well, this is getting to the point where the flaw isn't going to show terribly much. You won't be able to see what the problem is. Um, this goes then into this hole like that. And so you can see that there's this little, little bit here. Just this bit right here. Where I can grab it. It's one of the new ones. This one's got pink build up on it. New alligator clips. It costs as much for like a hundred of them as it does for ten. So I've got a lot of alligator clips. Okay, hopefully that won't pop off. I'm going to go flying somewhere. But, um, I'm now going to get out the door aluminium paint and paint this. And then I'm going to put it in the custom-made alligator clip holder here and let it dry. And let me see if I can find the paint. Is ladder. Only needs like one drop to cover that whole thing. These metallics <clears throat> cover very, very well. It doesn't take very much at all uh, to cover a surface. When they dry, they also dry pretty well without leaving brush marks, which is a good thing. They're designed for use with an airbrush, so they're really quite thin. Um, but with pieces like this, I find you can apply them with a brush and it works. I mean, if it were a large surface, a big flat surface, like a wing or a fuselage or something, um, you'd want to airbrush it on. But for pieces like this, you just, you don't, it works fine. <laughs> you know, none of the surfaces are huge enough where there's a chance of getting a brush mark. I'm just looking, making sure I'm not getting bubbles. So this has a good side and a bad side. This is the bad side. The seam shows. This is the good side. The seam doesn't show. And when I install it, I'm going to do my best to put the good side forward because that's the side that people will see. Okay. And you want to see the good side, not not the bad side. Okay. There's that. Put it in here and set it up here where I'm less likely to knock it down. Uh, yeah. I really have made a, a mess of the workbench today. I did. Um, I was going to do a lot of prep work yesterday and it got too busy and I didn't get around to it.
Um, yeah, I want this little pen. And I'm going to do marking some things. And then I want the green one and the red one. I might, I might put on one of the other places where there are indicator lights, I made one red, you know, because why not? So I might do the same up here on this one. But there's different parts. So what I decided was that along the side here, these were just rivets. But that on the front here, these were some sort of control things. standing up next to this you'd be able to use these they're like dials or buttons or something Seriously, there's still paint flaws. I'll try to touch that up. Okay, and then these back up here in the, in the center. Up at the top, these are indicator lights. They're going to be mostly green. But I'm going to make one of them red. Keep the crew on their toes. You know. Be alert. And there's some stuff on the side there. I'm going to turn those into uh, control things also. I was thinking maybe they, they'd be lights, but I'm, I decided that they're not. These are going to be like knobs, too. Okay, Let's see how the green is looking. This are okay. Now I'm going to do the one red one. Alert, alert. Something has gone wrong. One of the lights is red. Blinking, too. It should be blinking, but I can't get it to blink. Okay. Now, there's these other little raised things there. And I've been painting some of them like this bright green, which is which is kind of nice. But in this case, I'm thinking I might paint them white. The dead white. Yeah, very white, white. I'm going to paint them white so you can see them better. And they might be like indicator dials or something. Good next thing. So this, this thing has, like, it has dials on it. These don't have anything on the face of them, but... I'll just paint them white anyway. Ok. 
Yeah, you got that little dab of white paint, and let's just see how this goes. See if I can get it, get the paint to stay on the little raised circles. Paint on there and then kind of spread it around. There you can see little dots of bite emerging. So and, um, I need to get the that's wrong. Get the neutral gray back out again for the like fourth time. Because the more I look at it, the more I, I keep keep seeing little places where there's flaws in the paint. And they're in the front, so they're going to be visible. And pretty much what it is, is there's just like, just those little, the little crease between the vertical and horizontal surface. Didn't get paint on it. annoying to have to go back and do that kind of thing so this looks okay it's got buttons on it now it's got indicator lights it's got little dials yep that'll do and um, the scheme of things I just need to clean this brush now I'm going to get out. I need. To, I can take this off. Yeah, I've used up all my flat surfaces. Now, after the stream, I'm going to be spending apparently a fair amount of time trying to clean this mess up. It's, I use something and set it down, and it's just in the way. Clean enough for the moment. Toothpicks in the way, the brushes are in the way. This is almost done, but what I need now is this little stuff, this little piece of little white plastic putty stuff. And like I said, there's this little divot here where it was broken off of the tree instead of cutting, being cut off. This shrinks a little bit, I discovered, as it dries. So I'm going to put too much on because then I can sand down to it. If I put too little, the divot will remain. But if I put too much on, then I can uh, file it and sand it. So that fill, that's a filler, and it's filling in the spot. 
And then after it dries, which will be, it takes a while. It takes a surprisingly long amount of time for it to dry and harden. Um, I'll be able to sand that down and you'll never know it's there once it's painted. And then I'll be able to paint the floor. The floor will be painted dark gray underneath. Okay. And I, some sort of tan color. I, I'll have to look it up. I have to look up the color chart to see what color that floor is supposed to be. So this can be, this can set over here now, at least at the moment, get that out of the way. And I know there are still a few spots that need to be painted this dark gray color. And what they are is the very bottom of this the floor goes on top of that, but that's dark gray underneath. And on this side, the top and the bottom. And there isn't any good way to hold this. Unfortunately, there is no really good way to hold this while that's drying. Um, I could put a clip on it and that'll probably chip the paint. It really kind of needs to be on its side like this. Um, I'm going to try, this is the back and it won't show too much. So if I need to do some touching up, that's the place it will be. So I'm going to try this. So I'm going to stick it in there and uh, paint it while it's on that. The other thing that the last thing that needs to be done on this is that the ladder needs to be uh, highlighted with that tiny little felt tip pen. But I, I want the paint to be really dry before I do that. Otherwise it might bleed and then it would look, you know, it look messy. I don't need things looking any messier than is absolutely essential, right? You don't want more mess than you need. Okay, I'm, I can do this with a large brush. It's uh, mainly a matter of making sure that it's, that it's covered, okay? That there aren't any spots that are missed. So this underneath is a very small area uh, of one of the decks goes in between here. What I do is I'm going to actually hold this while I'm painting it. And then I'm going, when I'm done painting it, I'm going to put it on the sticky tack because it's just, it's not holding well enough. Right about now, it happens almost every time. So you'd think I'd learn my lesson, right? Right about now, my body is reminding me that I should have eaten something during break, but I didn't. And so, yay, low blood sugar, low blood sugar starts to arrive. deck above sits on top of this. Get the gray paint up high enough so that uh, the 
this the right color. When you look at it, especially from the front here. As always, probably after assembly, there will be touch up. Without a doubt, no doubt. But that uh, that's that's what's going on there. Because above this floor, it's gray and below this floor, it's gray. And right away. Right away, right off the bat, I can see there's a spot that wasn't covered. That's why I... I'm spending a lot of time doing touching up. It's because of um, the need to be do doing touching up. Okay, this is where I will take this and insert it into the sticky tack to hold it while it dries. Set that up there with the other things that are drying. What I'm going to be doing here is a bit of cleaning up. I'm going to take this tray full of parts, okay? As you can see, there's a lots of there's a lot of parts that need to be put together eventually. You get the get it sort of straightened out. These all of these parts are going onto the control room floor once I fabricate it to be working right. These will be painted and inserted here into these holes. And these go between, these hold the periscopes, okay, like this one's periscope, but I'm not going to paint those until I cut them to the right length because, as you can see, they're all three different lengths, and even the shortest one is too long. And um, I need to, I want to get all of the rest of this, this deck, this deck, this deck inserted into the hull, okay, because this deck goes then on top of this one so that I can get the alignment right. And then I can, what I mean by that is adding to this side and cutting off on this side so that these tubes, once they're cut to the correct length and in here, line up with the periscopes that come in from the top of the conning tower or the sail, as it is known. So these need to be set here. I'm just going to put all these parts here and cover them up so that they don't get too messed up, except for this. This is actually the, the, the high point of the stream is I'm going to attempt to install that into the hull of the submarine. It's something that was actually one of the very first bits, the torpedo room, it is a part of the torpedo room, which was the first thing installed, but because of all the detail on it, um, it didn't get done until quite a bit later. In fact, it didn't get done until last Wednesday. But we're going, I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to stick something into the submarine. I hope it works. I hope it fits. And then I'm going to clean up this workbench. Probably end up taking the rest of the day the way it looks. It is, if I were to pull the camera out and you were to see, you would be, you would go, this, this is not how to do this. This is not how to maintain your painting's work surface. And it's not. It is definitely not a good example of how to do keeping your work surface neat and clean and orderly so that you don't knock things over and 
get things in the way. Um, yeah, it's not. Just admit it. Actually, I did, who? Let me recap for you. Are you ready? Let's do recapping. I finished both sides of this bulkhead. I had done this earlier, but I painted the control surfaces there, but I got this side painted. Um, I painted this side of this bulkhead. I primed and painted the control room console for the gyro, which was made up of two parts. So I found the two parts and painted them, and that goes into that there. I finished this bulkhead on both sides. That came out pretty well. Um, what else did I get done? I got the ladder, the little ladder finished. I found that and painted that. Uh, and yeah, that. And now, now I'm going to put this into the submarine. So I'm going to get this stuff out of the way because the submarine itself is really quite large. I'm going to put this out of the way. Don't get to see this very often. The thing into which all those little pieces eventually get added. Okay. You don't very much get to see this, but ta da. It is an actual submarine thing. And that's the torpedo room, which was one of the first things I did ages ago. And this is the famous sail. And these are the famous periscopes that don't fit into the openings in the control room below it. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done on the hall here. Um, basically, I need to be painting a lot of this. Like this needs to be painted that light, that light color. Oh my, that does not. I'm concerned now that that color is not the same color as the color I painted the other side. I don't know. I'll have to check that out before I get too far. Anyway, this, this goes here into this slot. Yeah. Okay. It has now been installed and there's a gap there. Lovely. That gap will just have to remain there forever. Uh, because that's just the way this model is. It has that kind of features. Yeah. The, the forward bulkhead of the torpedo room is now installed into the torpedo room. And at some point, um, I need to do a little bit of dark gray touch-up on this side. And I need to paint the edges, these edges are painted the hull color because that's where it was cut away. I need to paint this and that very, very carefully with a dark gray color. I'm not going to do that today because as we get near the end of a stream like this, um, things just things just get a little bit ragged, you know, just a little bit. And I would very likely end up getting paint all over the place. So I'm going to check something. If this is a problem, I guess I want to know about it now. Right? This paint color here is not at all the same as that. Not even close. So I need to repaint these two. I need to find out what that color was because I wrote it down. Okay. I wrote it down and it's not, 
it isn't what it said it was. I don't know what color that is. But I know it's not that. It isn't even close. Weird. Um, so yeah, I've got some real fixing to do. I got some major fixing up to do to find that color and paint these two pieces that, that color correctly. And there's not enough time to do that. Maybe there's time to find out what color it was. I really made a big mistake. I think it's actually ivory. This color. Well, it can't be any worse. I'm, I am, I have a little time left. I'm celebrating the fact that I installed that. Isn't that great? That's pretty cool. I just went offline. I did not end the stream. It just stopped. I wonder if the internet went out. Weird. Um, and unsettling. So I'm not sure why that happened. Uh, but, yeah, I am no longer streaming. So I'm going to end the stream and then uh, clean up.